so gang, first of all, I uh, want to thank the team here for having me today. Um, I, I'll just tell you right now, I have nothing to sell you. Um, so um, just sit tight. I got a lot of great quality information. I want to share something that's not just a setup, but it's also a great way to help avoid uh, trades, close positions, and that. So it's kind of a multifaceted tool. Uh, and so we're going to share some additional information that you guys normally don't see about this strategy that I've written in professional magazines around the world. So we're going to go ahead and hit a couple different things for you um, and then give you some more uh, valuable content at the end. But I have nothing to sell you today. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy what we have to share with you. Um, first things first, just want to remind people trading does involve risk, not just reward. A lot of people talk about how much money you can make in the markets, but we also want to keep it real and talk about how much money we can lose too. So always consult a registered financial representative or a risk trading plan before ever trading anything. Now, before I get going, I just want to let you guys know I've had an upper respiratory infection for about a week. I've just been finally getting my voice back in the last three or so days. Uh, so I may cough here or there. I'll try to mute that if I can, but uh, they come on pretty spontaneously. So just bear with me, but I didn't want to cancel today. So I want to be here. So hopefully <laughs> that'll be okay. Um, um, so um, as we go ahead and we uh, focus on what this really works on, in my opinion, uh, stocks, options, futures, forex, and this presentation is going to be primarily geared towards day and swing traders. So if you trade those instruments or those time frames, you're in the right place. Four things we're going to cover here, knowing some of the proper setups uh, to even consider a trade, identifying precise entries for the trades, simple technicals, help identify the trend direction, and near the end, we're going to cover several of those ahas that I mentioned at the open uh, that you've always wondered about the strategy. So we got some key updates for you on that because this can be used to get in, stay in, stay out or get out of trades. Um, it acts as a key support resistance level until broken for targets and continuation trades. So with that being said, let's talk about the inventory retracement bar trade. What is this? It is a price action based trend continuation trade. So when do we tend to use it? It's most effective in trending markets. How do we identify it? Now, looking back over the last 20 periods, on the time frame you're looking to trade, we're looking for these things called signal bars. That's where the open and the close are approximately 50% or more off their high in an uptrend, or 45% or more off their low in a downtrend. So basically what you're gonna be doing is asking yourself how much wick is showing is approximately 45% or more. So let's take a look at those signal bars a little bit closer before we move on. So in a downtrend, what I'm looking for here is where we have, um, uh, you know, 45% or more of the bottom part of the bar is wick. And in this case, you can see about 85 plus percent of the bar is wick. Uh, same thing over here, 45% uh, or more wick, 45% more wick, so on and so forth. Now, I just want to make sure you guys understand this is four individual unique patterns, uh, not a not a four bar pattern. It's four individual ex unique examples, all right? So that's what we're looking for in a downtrend where we got the, the bottom part of this, the open and the close are in the top 55%, only the bottom 45% or more is wick. Now, in a downtrend, or in an uptrend, we're looking for just the opposite. We're looking for bars that are 45% or more off their high. So the open and close is 45% or more wick uh, in this case, all right? Uh, and uh, that's the first thing that we're looking for. Now, where is the, and those are called signal bars, and the time frame you're looking to trade, daily, weekly, uh, hourly, five minute, two minute. I don't use them below two minute charts, two minutes and above only. So not tick charts, not one minute charts. Um, where's the entry? It's typically one tick, one cent, one pip above or below the signal bar, all right? So in a downtrend, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for this area where one or more institutions has not only stopped the market from going down, but has actually started to drive it back up. Now, from there, what I'm looking for is the market to roll back over, break one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of that bar, and that's where I'm looking to enter the trade. Now, in an uptrend, I'm looking for just the opposite. I'm looking for bars where one tick, one cent, one pip off the high, um, and, and then what's happening is after the market pulls back, I'm looking to go long 
you know, one tick, one cent, one pip there above the high of that bar. Okay, so uh, in the downtrend, I'm looking for short-term support and then break below that support. In an uptrend, I'm looking for short-term resistance and then to break back above that resistance. Okay, now where's the exit? It's a trailing stop to or to the next key support resistance level. We're going to talk about that in uh, just a moment. So let's talk about my personal trailing stop methodology. I want you to think 50, 80, 90 price. Okay, so. First of all, what happens is before we take a trade, because we never get smarter once we're in a trade, we uh, before we take a trade, we identify the key target. In this case, it was out to this red line over here. Uh, daily, weekly, monthly pivots are great targets. Um, we uh, heard uh, the gentleman before us, Mark, go ahead and talk about uh, how some key control points were identified. Whatever your keys, your target area is, um, those are going to be your um, uh, places to identify as the target. So with that being said, in this case, that red line is right up about here. So as we get about 50% of the way to the overall target, we start trailing by 50% of profit earned. All right. Now, as we get about 80% of the way to the target, we start trailing by about 80% of profit earned. As we get up to the price, the target, we start trailing by 90% of profit earned. Why? What's more likely to statistically happen as we get up to this target? Is it more likely to keep going or is it more likely to stop and reverse? It's far more likely to stop and reverse, right? So with that being said, um, we want to go ahead and trail. So we're giving it a chance to run, but as it gets towards the target, we're not going to let it come all the way back here to our initial entry or worse. A lot of people are taught to put a target out there, you know, put stop loss and let it ride. Too many people see them, they make a little bit of profit, then it rolls over and becomes a full stop loss. So I want to give it a chance to make profit, but I also want to uh, make sure I don't give all that profit back. So 50, 80, 90 to price. Now what happens with to price is if it doesn't immediately break through that resistance level, then just move it up to the current bid offer and expect to be taken out. If it happens to be one out of 10, one out of 12 times where you'll get one more push up there, trap in retail traders, then great, basically trail it one for one in manual fashion. Okay, so that's uh, how that we look at that from a trailing stop perspective. Now, where is the stop loss? It's one tick, one cent, one pip below the uh, or the low of or the high of the signal bar or predetermined loss value. Plus a little secret for my back testers uh, to, to test their favorite trades in. So. You recall in a downtrend, we want to trade with the trend, and what we're looking for here is to have it pop up, roll back over, and go short one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of the bar. Well, the official stop loss is going to be right back here, one tick, one cent, one pip above the high of that bar. Now, a little secret um, you know, to share with you here that you guys can back test depends on whether you have a high beta, low uh, beta uh, type uh, stock. Um, the, uh, d so the more volatile um, it is, um, the, uh, what you could do is if it even goes back beyond 60% of this, the width of that bar, statistically it's far more likely to actually make it all the way back to the 100%. So depending on the stocks or the instruments, the futures, markets, currencies you like to trade, back test that to see if normally when it gets beyond 60% for the instruments you like to trade, does it go all the way to the 100% level, okay? Because um, if it does, if you're trading one of those high volatility stocks, then what you may want to do is consider just cutting your trades after the 60% because there's that high probability, then you're going to lose an additional uh, 40, all right? Now, the um, a couple of key points to remember about this. I want you to think about the concept of rocket fuel. If it's moved a large range quickly, the breakout is likely to at least temporarily fail. And what we're talking about there is this. You'll see this wide range bar here. Look at this huge bar. Now remember, where's our entry on this trade? The entry on this trade with this particular setup is one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of this bar. And so what that means to us um, is basically it's got it's gone all the way back up here, which means for this particular type of entry with this strategy, it's got to come all the way back down here. Then you're looking to get short then you're looking for continuation. Gang, that's a lot of move. What's more likely to happen in a situation like that when it has come all the way back down here to get into an entry, usually it's going to end up bouncing back up for a while before it comes down, then may even hit it again 
before it ultimately rolls over. So to avoid some of the heartache and pain of uh, trades like that, if it's if it's had to move with you know use up a lot of rocket fuel to get to the point of an entry. Um, you know, basically two or three times or more the normal average true range of the other bars around it, it's probably just best to pass on that particular trade, okay? Now, the um, but here, you see, this has not had to go in an over, um, uh, it hasn't had to overexert itself to come right back down here, especially if it dribbles down. We really like to see a kind of slow bleed back down to those entries or for in an uptrend, slow bleed and then break. We like to see those because uh, that that makes small lot retail traders have a lack of confidence. Whenever the market's slowly bleeding, they have no confidence. They like to see big wide range fast bars and then jump in and that's usually when then the market rolls over down the uh, downside same thing whoosh down then turn around and go back to the upside so a couple of key things to remember this has a lot of diverse applications and in different instruments in different time frames more or less uh, any of the uh, uh, stocks futures options uh, well particularly stocks uh, futures and currencies options you know usually this is weekly and above uh, for options in my opinion um, not that people haven't gone ahead and used it in a day trading capacity I don't um, so weeklies or monthlies from my perspective but the um, uh, the intraday charts anything two minutes or above for the other markets that we mentioned okay so very diverse applications in different markets also remember trail your entries to reduce risk of reversion to the mean that's what RTM is reversion to the mean trade in the direction of disregard this part here it says BBT pro trader pack so or a basic alternative a 45 degree angled 20 period exponential moving average over the last 20 bars that is something you're going to want to remember so don't worry about all this other cool stuff that you see on your screens today we're not going to talk about that I'm not selling you anything today um, the uh, what I want to go ahead and do is just get you a focus uh, for something you can walk away with today and go back and uh, show and test for yourself so in this particular case, you'll notice that we have a 20 period exponential moving average up here. That's that black line. And what we do is like to see that in approximately a 45 degree angle. The reason why if it's much steeper than that, it's usually unsustainable. Um, so 45 degrees is a little bit more sustainable. And if it's too shallow, well, we'll talk about that in just a little bit, share some, some uh, stories with you. You need to be aware of with that being too flat. So this is kind of what we're looking for. Nice 20 period exponential moving average uh, 45 degree angle now here's all those rules one more time kind of put on one screen for you okay now let's just recap what we saw here so in a downtrend we're looking for this to go ahead and uh, be uh, find bars these signal bars that are 45 percent or more off their low in a downtrend and we're looking to go short one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of that bar. We're looking to trail it to the next key support resistance level. Uh, our stop loss is officially one tick beyond the uh, high of that bar. Or, uh, as I told you, a little secret there, depending on the uh, um, uh, volatility of your stock, perhaps if it goes beyond the 60% level, that could be a, um, a stop loss. In an uptrend, we're looking to have it go up, you have one or more institutions temporarily uh, have enough inventory to stop it from going down, but now we're looking for it to go back up, one tick, one cent, one pip above the high of those, and um, where that inventory is cleared out, and now the market's free to go back on board the original direction. The official stop loss is one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of the signal bar. Um, and don't forget that 60% rule we shared with you. All right, and again, this is not a, uh, a four bar pattern. These are just four individual examples. So as we go ahead and uh, take a look now, Here's a weekly chart of Apple, a daily chart of Apple. I just want you to see this in different time frames. I like to show this chart even you know, all these years later, I show this to retail and institutional clients alike because this is one that I shared very publicly um, as this was happening back when it was happening in some free nightly videos I do. And um, so I always like to show stuff where I did it in like public fashion somewhere, you know, when I was traveling to a, a trade show or something like that. So with that being said, we have a weekly chart pushing down here. We got that nice 45 degree angle on that 20 period um, uh, moving average. And here's one of those bars, as you can see. Can everybody see we're 45% or more off the low in a downtrend? That is a signal bar. Can everybody see that? 
Okay, great. So now what we're looking for uh, from there is we're looking for one or more um, ticks, one, one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of that bar. Notice what happened. It actually took uh, that market had so much inventory, so much buy power there. It pushed up and then came right back down and then sat there for two more weeks. There was so much inventory there to buy. It took two more weeks, but notice what happened beyond that. Once it got through there, it whooshed to the downside. That whoosh is a common theme I want you guys to remember because that's where retail traders are usually throwing in the towel or chasing into trades. So we're looking for that to happen. Um, and this is one of those phenomenons that creates those whooshing situations. Now, um, so then, of course, a, a round number support is an obvious place to tighten up your uh, key supports um, or your, your key trailing stops for something like this. Now, the question is, when you get another signal, can you take a trade again? And the answer is yes, as long as you still have the trend. So here we have this one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of that bar. Um, and uh, then you'll see for the next three weeks thereafter, it came down very nicely right back to that key support then started to bounce again. So you guys can see a theme here. What do we expect to have happen? We see we expect to it to accelerate once it goes, one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of those bars. When we get to key support resistance levels, we want to trail up our trades much more aggressively. Um, and uh, that we can continue to take fresh re-entries as long as we still have a trend. Now, each one of these trades is treated uh, treated on their own merits. Um, I often get the question, uh, and over here is a reason why we do get that kind of question, can I just keep adding into the trade? Um, so in other words, if I go a short here, one tick, one cent, one pip below the low, well, we're expecting it to go do what from there? Whoosh to the downside, right? Okay, well, the thing is, that uh, what I do is that now in that case I'm going to already start trailing down my trade, and so this this order right here, this whoosh back up, uh, that whip back up, might have taken me out of that trade. All right, now the uh, so the question is, what if I didn't though? What if I was still in that trade and another signal comes up? Should I add into the existing position and you know double up or whatever uh, with more? Or like here, I get another entry, should I add in, double up, you know, add in more? And the answer from my perspective is, sounds really great in a textbook, but not in real life. Why, gang? Because as you guys all know here, the trend is your friend till the bend in the end. What's more likely to happen? It, when, when we first get signals and we first get trends, is it more likely to continue to go? Or after we've been having a trend, 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 you know, think about today's environments in these markets. How long do these markets trend before they turn right around and stop in reverse? You go ahead and you start getting your heaviest down at the end of the trade, you're far more likely to stop in reverse. Does that make sense, everybody? So, no, each trade is trade taken on its own merits. If uh, you're going to go in with more size, from my perspective, I'd want to do that earlier on, okay, not later on after it's been going for a while, all right? Now, you know, in actual live trading competitions, I've used this strategy here. Um, over in Paris, for instance, won some very big, famous trading competitions. We didn't have a chance to talk about that because I only have 45 minutes today um, and a lot to share with you. So the, uh, but here's an example in one of those international competitions that I won with real money over in Paris. Um, we broke down uh, below the inventory retracement bar, and you can see what happened. Very quickly thereafter, it whooshed to the downside. Now, here's another example, and this was very interesting as well, because uh, there's a lot of judges and referees standing over us, have to validate, validate, verify every trade, put it up on a screen for people to see, so there's a lot going on. Well, what's nice is here we had a situation where the market was coming down, we had this 45% or more off the low in a downtrend, and then what ended up happening here was... Um, the market actually uh, went and uh, made that signal. So I was able to put the order out there way in advance and tell the judges about it. And it sat there for about 18 minutes or so. Um, and then what happened though was it broke down that one tick, one cent, one pip below the low there. And look what happened. It whooshed to the downside. Okay. So you kind of start to see a theme there. Now, this, the, and we won't have a lot of time to address all these different things uh, that this uh, uh, 
uh, addresses here today, but it's trying to get you to think more like an institutional trader. You know, and let's talk here for a moment, you know, avoiding uh, sell side mistakes where institutions distract sellers from wanting to sell, uh, give buyers false hope that uh, went long above, stop out uh, the uh, late sellers who need big fast bars. Well, let's talk about that for a moment. So as we go back over here, notice uh, right here, all right, when somebody was finally thinking about shorting, this market starts to push back to the upside. So if they were thinking about shorting, they see it go back up, they're like, whoa, good thing I didn't take that trade. That would have been another one of those losers, okay? And so that's one way they get you. Another way they go and get you is the people who went long up above, up over here, start to see it coming back up, and they're like, oh, yeah, keep going, keep going, come on, come on, recover my loss, make me some money, I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose, come on, come on. Uh, and that teases them only to roll over again. And we see that often, um, you know, with people hoping and wishing that the trade's going to come back their way, right? So what ends up happening, and then here you'll notice that these bars were very small at first, but then picked up in the intensity, and then that's when people start getting excited about shorting only to have it whip back ab above. So what this strategy is designed to do is try to overcome all three of those things, waiting for those three things to come to pass, and uh, then looking for the trade accordingly um, after that has come to pass. So, And then the buy side is exactly the opposite. But this is designed to address these things and get you thinking more institutionally. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, great. So as we go ahead and we move on, let's uh, take a look at um, another example here. So the um, uh, first things first, you, you see the market was actually coming down in the backdrop over here, and it was 45% or more off the low in the downtrend. We're looking to go short one tick, one cent, one pip, in this case, um, one tick below the low of this bar, and uh, then you see the market actually whooshed uh, to the downside afterwards. These are all live trades that I did in my live account in these international trading competitions, um, and uh, so it's very important that uh, you guys uh, understand that this is a real, uh, really great opportunity, all right? Now, let's go ahead and uh, take a look back. So does this chart look more familiar? So let's revisit this chart and see, as we you know looked into multiple examples, if um, this will um, uh, make a little bit more uh, sense to you now. So the market's trending down. We have 45% or more off the low in a downtrend, and we're looking to get short one tick, one cent, one pip below the low of that bar. Uh, same thing over here. Um, you know, then, you know, of course, you should long be out of this. As this was coming down to round number support, you absolutely should have been trailing down. But if for some reason you didn't, you got greedy, well, then you turned around and made it a loss. The loss would officially be one tick, one cent, one pip above the high, in this case, one cent above the high of that signal bar, okay? So if you shorted here and you let it come all the way back over here, you turned a perfectly good trade into a loser. Um, I found one of the big things that made successes and, and changes for me in my trading career uh, was in what helped me start winning a lot more of these trading competitions was the concept of trailing the trades. Giving it a chance to run, but if it's not gonna run, turn around and uh, take that profit, okay? Um, and then once we have another signal fire off, can we take that trade? The answer is yes, we absolutely can go ahead and take that trade as long as um, the uh, uh, we have a fresh signal and we have a continued trend. All right, and remember over here as we talked about, notice what happened here. The market was coming down. We had that uh, uh, bar that was 45% uh, or more off the low in a downtrend. It sat there, and I know the blue line's just a hair off here. It's a little bit hard to see, but basically what happened was it sat here one, two, three days. It just sat there. There was so much inventory taking place at that time that um, it, it was just, it, it, they had to eat through it, eat through it, eat through it, then they finally did, and then that's when it broke loose to the downside again, okay? So that's why these are, you know, these are institutional inventory bars that you have to be aware of. Now, let's look about the, the same stock, same great stock, but on the long side here. Um, the, uh, we, we certainly don't want to discount the long side, although the short side is always more fun, isn't it? Because, you know, the market tends to, you know, walk the stairs up, right, and then 
you know, ride the elevator down. So it's always more fun. But after uh, Apple stock, I went out and did this whole presentation for you guys again in my nightly videos um, where we uh, now have the opposite side. So you got this gorgeous 20 period exponential moving average. Hopefully everybody can see that. You couldn't ask for better uh, in that situation. And um, the uh, so look what's happened. Can you guys identify? I've marked them, but can you see them easy enough with your own eyes um, exactly what um, the uh, you know what the offer is here, or what the um, uh, the opportunity is here uh, in this case. We're sitting here, we're 45% or more off the high. What are we looking to do? Go long, one tick, one cent, one pip, in this case, one cent above the high here. The stop loss is back behind here, right? And then we trail the stop up to the next key supports, which on a stock like this that was coming through $100 at the time, 110 would be that next uh, level. And then after it pulled back, it took back off, had a double uh, double dutch, if you will, two IRBs back to back here and actually broke back above those, which is a very powerful signal. And uh, it went and took off. The next stop on in that case is 120, in my opinion. Okay, so the uh, but you can see each of the entry and re-entry. If you miss this initial opportunity or you miss this opportunity, can you get back into this trade? From my perspective, the answer is yes, as long as you still have uh, the uh, signal. Okay, um, and uh, the uh, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, let's see, Mike says, uh, I'm a breakout futures trader, and I often get stopped out uh, when placing the uh, uh, stops one tick. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. One tick, one cent, uh, one pip above the high or low of the day. Um, absolutely, Mike. See, I agree with you. In fact, you'll notice none of my strategies involve just something being the high or low of the day, um, They uh, because that is such an obvious place for all the retail traders to get trapped. I mean, Mike, oh, geez, I mean, it's been a long time now, but I remember back in the 90s, I would do the, that because, I mean, how easy was it, right, Mike, to read a book and, hey, look for breakouts above the high or low of the day? And so the reality is that's such an obvious, easy place all the retail traders, they look at the low of the day or the high of the day or the lower high of yesterday, and we, we jump into it like, you know, um, uh, flies you know, to the light. Um, and so, yeah, no, I absolutely do not advocate that. Um, and what I would do is this is, of course, a very different kind of bar, a different kind of strategy. This is based on where we have a trend in place and then where one or more institutions has shown themselves uh, to um, – uh, have inventory at that time. Okay, so very different strategy here, but I absolutely agree with you. Uh, buying and selling, you know, highs and lows of the day, not a good combination. All right, so. Now here is a trade I just gotten done teaching this uh, 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 this talk in uh, Barcelona, Spain, and then turned right around and we had the signal and and uh, that was great, made a nice profit. Uh, but hopefully everybody can see here's that 20 period exponential moving average. And can everybody see the bar that's 45% uh, or more off the low in a downtrend, right? So what this does is all those people that needed those big red bars before they finally traded stops them out. The people who didn't get into a trade but were thinking about shorting whips back up. And they're like, whoa, good thing I didn't take that trade. The people who are long up above here see it come back. They're like, come on, go, 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 go. Right, and so they were um, hoping that it's going to uh, go their way, um, and so those three retail trader perspectives and how this allows us to say, hey, I'm not going to get suckered into the big long red bar. I'm not going to go ahead and take the trade into the pullback, although I do have a great stochastic spike trade, but that's a different conversation for a different time. Instead, waiting for it to go right back down below the low of that bar and get back into the direction of the trend, much more peaceful way from my perspective to manage that trade, okay? So a couple of things to remember, uh, trade with a reasonable trend. The more shallow you make the trend, the lower the probabilities of success with this trade or any other trade. A great story out of California. I uh, taught this class in California, and then I had a guy um, who um, uh, followed up with me several months later. He's like, hey, Rob, what happened to the, uh, the, the trade? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Um, 
and I, I said, uh, you're still, I'm still using it, I'm winning these trading competitions, and so on and so forth. And he said, well, you know, it's not working for me. Well, so come to find out what had happened was originally he did more of the 45 degree angle stuff, but then he started seeing he get more trades if he shallowed it out to 40, 35, 30, 25, and eventually he was effectively flat. Well, gang, I promise you, you will get a lot more trades He's absolutely right. You get a lot more trades by shallowing out the trend, but then you're not really trading with the trend, and this is a trend uh, you know, following the technique. So uh, that's exactly why his performance went down. That's why I said you know, trade with that reasonable trend that we talked about. Um, I strongly uh, encourage you to uh, uh, you know, do that. Number, uh, and so here's a great example of what happens. So you'll see this is the kind of thing that gets a lot of people to do that. You see that this really got pretty shallow here. And but what happened was there's an inventory retracement bar, here's one, here's one, here's one, and it did keep going a little bit lower and a little bit lower and a little bit lower. So people see this and it's like, wow, well I, I you know, even with a flat market, I can get a lot of trades. Well, the reality is that in the longer term it will tend to bite them. So prefer to get that nice high quality trend. Does that make sense? Um, you know, the more you do this, I promise you, you will get a lot of, uh, a lot more trades by making it shallow, but I also promise you that you will go ahead and uh, start suffering more losses, and I believe your overall profitability will suffer uh, for that. All right? Now, the um, next thing is, Two or more IRBs back-to-back uh, -back or within two bars of each other can spell trouble for your trend continuation. Consider tightening your trailing stop. Um, and so, yeah, so remember now, uh, 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 Charles, it's 20 bars. That's 20 bars of data, right? So we got 20 bars back um, is what we're using, all right? So we're basically analyzing that 20-bar period, okay? All right, and so as we go ahead and, um, so thanks for the question, Charles. And uh, so as we go ahead and look at this now, so this is what we're talking about. See this market is going down, but then we end up with back-to-back you know, -back bars. Here, back-to-back -back bars. So those bars, uh, you know, that's a lot of institutional accumulation and can lead to a rejection. A lot of institutional um, uh, distribution can lead to rejection. Now, up over here, you'll see within two bars of each other, and that's what I said, either back-to-back -back or within two bars of each other, um, that's usually what we're looking for, okay? And uh, so, the uh, and then down here, you see two bars back-to-back, -back and it took back off again. So, when you see them back-to-back, -back, you start watching out, and it really means I want to cease and desist any shorting operations I'm doing when I get these two bars back-to-back -back within two bars, vice versa, you know, two bars back-to-back, -back, I want to start going, stop going long, and that. All right. Now, an IRP appearing on multiple time frames at the same time can dramatically increase the likelihood of market reversal. So, here's a situation where on this two-minute, five minute and 15 minute, we had a distribution bar on all three time frames at the same time. Can everybody see that okay? Right here, I'll highlight it in yellow. So uh, at the exact same time on all three of these bars, we had a distribution bar, all right? And so look what happened. It All it did was came right back up later to that level, and that's a key point. It's a key resistance level until broken. So it came right up to that level, and then the selling just uh, uh, you know uh, took over again and rolled it right back over. So that uh, those when you see it on multiple time frames, that's a big warning sign. Make sense? So two or more time frames, you know, watch out. The entire band of uh, IRB wicks are key support resistance level. This is see everybody looks at these always as just like trend uh, entry opportunities, and so what I'm trying to introduce to you is that actually um, these aren't just uh, uh, entry opportunities. There are also places to avoid entries as well. Um, and so with that being said, let's take a look here. This this was very similar to a classic situation that I had in Las Vegas. Um, a few years ago, I was doing a trading competition. I used to still go to the, uh, the physical shows back then. Um, I've really sworn those off um, uh, for some time now. I've got a family and a um, uh, whole, whole host of other reasons we'll talk about in a few minutes. But um, 
the uh, uh, background used to go to the physical shows and do the trading competitions here uh, in the United States and such. Um, I had a, a trade on that I was long, and basically what was happening was we were coming right back up to this area of distribution. These areas are big, fat distribution bars until broken, and it's so important that you understand that. Look what happened here. It pulled back, then it took, it came back up, got killed off again. Came back up, got killed off again. Came up, that same area got killed off. Came up one more time and never looked back the rest of the day. In fact, interesting to note that shortly after this uh, chart, the uh, gold started to really pervasively drop in the bigger picture as well. So these these levels, these institutional levels are, are not to be fooled with. And so like I was in a situation where the market pulled back and was taking back off. Off, but when we got up there, I notified everybody in the audience that I was closing out my position uh, because the uh, market was coming up to this this thing called an IRB, and uh, so I told people, hey, we're, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and close out of the position. So I did, and that helped me win that trading competition because um, my competitor pushed really hard at that time, and and uh, so I was able to win. So um, some key things to note there. Now the uh, and so with that being said. Notice what happens. So here, um, this bar is a distribution bar. Well, so now we have that distribution bar, and when we pull back up to that area, that is now area of resistance. Well, now that made a distribution bar, and so now that is an area of resistance. Look what happened. Pulls right back up to that level of distribution and rolls over. Then it goes ahead and makes another distribution bar right over here, and as of this chart, never went ahead and looked back. So the point is that these levels, until broken, are new key support or resistance levels. Okay, I want you guys to see that. Very, very important. All right. Now, with all that being said, um, so these are all those key points I want you to remember. And then I want you to think about something else here for me. I know people like it at the end of these events when I offer to something for a special price, more of my trading strategy and such. I'm not going to do that today. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you something for free um, and that's far more valuable than anything else I could possibly offer you today. So. The, if you're tired of the expense of travel, uh, TSA uh, pat-downs and frisks and delays in those lines, delayed or canceled flights, mazes of hotel conference rooms, uh, you know, chasing around from class to class like a mouse at these big hotels trying to get to the next class for a, a, a event, or you simply want a lot more of like celebrity speakers and thought leaders delivered to your home in your, or your office without ever having to leave anywhere, if you day trade, swing trade stocks, futures, options, currencies, want to know how to trade cryptocurrencies, the hottest instruments on the market that's about to get hotter because cryptocurrency futures are about to come out, uh, are you interested in investing in precious metals, interested in retirement planning, estate planning, or tax planning? You want to know the best strategies for investing in real estate or even using like properties you own or are considering owning uh, through like awesome Airbnb rental, or if you're interested in starting, building or growing a business, go to wealth365.com forward slash BBT, wealth365.com forward slash BBT. Um, what you'll see there, gang, it, the actual website itself is really cool. Uh, in fact, our next speaker, Johnny Seville, as well as myself, are both a part of this event. Um, and uh, I, what's nice is there's all these speakers, many you'll recognize, you know, there's myself, real estate guys, Dan Gramza, Jim Overweiss uh, from Overweiss Asset Management, Charles Biederman on CNBC a lot, Ralph Ackerman. Compora, Jack Schwager, countless names. Uh, Adam and Scott. Scott Martin's on Fox Business all the time. Uh, you know, Todd Gordon's on CNBC there, and countless, countless others. It's uh, over 60 plus people already uh, that are speaking at this event. Uh, this is uh, coming up here very soon, and you got incredible number of speakers uh, from all over the industry. Uh, in fact, uh, like I said I know that uh, even. Um, uh, Johnny Seville coming up next is going to be there as well. A lot of great people from all over in all sorts of different industries are going to be a part of that. Um, and uh, so you do not want to go ahead and miss that event. It's a great way to get access to all these different things, these methodologies. It's a week long. It's free to attend that. So if you go to wealth365.com, 
forward slash BBT. I put the link in there for you, and you can go ahead and uh, uh, join us for that special event. Um, and I look forward to seeing you there. It's the best thing I can possibly do for you, uh, for all of you that are here today, uh, because that's just a world of information. You're going to get the great information from Johnny in a few minutes and uh, his offer today, but then you can come see him at this special event. Uh, and all these celebrity speakers, these business thought leaders, uh, people that can help you with your struggling business, help you start up a business, real estate, retirement, taxes, everything. It's absolutely phenomenal. So um, you know, go to become, you know, go to uh, Wealth Three Six. 65.com forward slash BBT right now. Get yourself signed up. It's free, um, and you are not going to want to miss that very special event with incredible speakers from all over six days of fantastic content and everything that you could possibly want to see, all things wealth. All right? So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, thank all of you for being here, uh, a part of my special event. Look forward to seeing you uh, at the upcoming Wealth 365 event. I uh, want to go ahead and uh, you know say, uh, Johnny, uh, knock him dead. I'm sure you're going to do a great job as you always do. He, Johnny's got a lot of great stuff. He's a friend of mine as well. And uh, I'm, I'm going to sit around and uh, listen to what he has to say as well. So I appreciate you guys going and being here with me. I'll see you at Wealth 365 uh, event. And uh, thanks for having me here today. Over to you guys.